This will be the largest group of assembled fans in the Western Hemisphere. That's why they need a big house. Welcome to Ann Arbor, home of the Michigan Wolverines. Little gets the blood boiling, quite like a rivalry game. Barbs, shots, trash talk, things that go on throughout the week will now all be settled on this field. As we'll see the number two team in the country, the Ohio State Buckeyes, taking on the ninth-ranked team in the land, the Michigan Wolverines. For EA Sports College Football, I'm Reese Davis, joined here in the booth, as always, by David Pollock and Jesse Palmer. Guys, let's tee this one up. The Wolverines will kick it away to start us off. On the run from inside his own five. He was hoping for something a little more dynamic, but they get him on the ground at the 20. The Buckeyes offense will have the first possession of the game. Stakes are always high in the game. Careers are made and lost because of it, and they'll have to manage their emotions, guys. Some games in college football just mean more. When you think about Ohio State and Michigan, you think about not just Big Ten implications, national title implications, Heisman Trophy implications. Late in the year, David, this is just must-watch TV. Must-watch TV. Two of the winningest programs in college football history. This game, I tell you what, recent years has really brought back the tradition and been so much more competitive now that Michigan's also getting some wins. Dropping back, it's Howard. Receiver looks it in, it's complete. He almost picked up the first down on that one, but he'll be just a little bit short. Early in the game, I love getting my quarterback in a rhythm. Easy pitch and catch. You've thrown him 4,000 times. Not big shots, but just put you in nice positions on the next downs coming up. This crowd trying to make life miserable for this offense. They'll try to bully their way for the first. Wrestled to the ground after picking up the first down. It's a really good sign if you're on offense here. You're putting it on your offensive line on third down. Critical down and distance, opening drive of the game. Let those guys fire off, get a hat on a hat. You can run the ball, pick up the first. You're around midfield. And all things looking pretty good here early for this offense. Quarterback on the keeper. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. Well, they were trying to set up the option, but the quarterback had no chance. Did you see the defensive tackle penetrate? What a great first step. He shot right through the offensive line and got the TFL. Lost one on that last one. It's second and 11. He's looking to throw. Got his man downfield. He knew exactly where he wanted to go with that one, and they've got enough for the first down. Really nice throw there to get the first down. And, you know, when you think about Ohio State quarterback play, especially here recently, it all comes down to efficiency. You have to make good decisions. you got to read the defense. you got to be accurate. When you think of guys like Justin Fields, C.J. Stroud, guys who went in the first round, that's what they did. And this guy right here, I think he has the ability to be a first-rounder in the future. And a nice, solid pickup there before the defense wrestles him to the ground. After the productive first down play, it's second and six. The give out of the gun. Fakes his man out. Good, solid pick up there. Now they can start to smell it with a first down at the 31. As they unpack the pile, it's part of Ohio State's DNA to have a lethal running game. And this is a trend, Reese. We can go back as long as you want to go back, and we can go back a couple years to J.K. Dobbins, and we can go all the way back to Eddie George. They always find great running backs at Ohio State. Off play action on first down. And that pass intercepted. Takes it the other way. He'll go out of bounds, but he gets the ball back. Takes it the other way, and he has created a great sudden change opportunity. Three tight ends in the formation on first and ten. 
on the ground. It's Edwards. The colors of the day were maize and blue when Michigan won a close one last year. It was Ohio State leaving the stadium feeling blue after that one, too, the way that Michigan enforced their will late in that game. They were the most physical team when they needed to be, and, David, they're going to have to do that again to pull out this W. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if you're the coach at Ohio State and you've won every game on your schedule, but you lose to Michigan, it's an unsuccessful year. So he's heard about it all offseason, and these players have, too and they'll be ready for some revenge. I think that was an example of the offensive coordinator trying to help out his quarterback. He's trying to keep these third downs manageable. You know, you throw the ball on second down and it's incomplete. Now you've set up third and long, and now you're set up to fail. On third and short, the run and looking for the first down. They get him on the ground, but not before he gets enough for the first down. You know, they pride themselves on being physical at the point of attack dominated at the line of scrimmage. Nice job there picking up the first down. And the Wolverines come to the line with a new set of downs. From the gun, they'll try to impose their running game. A strong tackle and wrap up from the junior. There are so many great rivalries in college football, guys, but I think this one, because of the disdain and the excellence, sort of rises to the top. Yeah, I mean, listen, there are great rivalries scattered all around this country, in-state rivalries, interconference rivalries, with great history, great pageantry. But I think what makes Ohio State versus Michigan unique is the fact that more often than not, these are two teams competing for national championships at the end of the year, and this game really does determine the national landscape. And 19 national championships between the two teams. Late in the year, it always matters. You go back to 2006, number one versus number two. So always disdain, always hate. Don't even call each other by their names. Like, this rivalry means so much to college football. Gets it out fast. All the way down to the 25-yard line. They move the sticks. It's first down. Making great decisions. That's what all of the legendary Michigan quarterbacks have done. John Navarre, Elvis Gerback, and the guy can't remember drafted in the sixth round by the Patriots. Yeah, well, that guy, what was his name? Tom Br Tom Brady? Yeah, I think I think that's his name. Yeah, he, he was pretty good, too. But when you pass rush, coming after the quarterback, and they get him at the 32. That type of pressure on the quarterback, that's vintage Ohio State, right in keeping with the legacy that's been established by the Buckeye D. Yeah, and you take pride in that. You own that legacy with all those guys you see performing at a high level in the NFL. Man, you see that, you want to go get it. Recruiting guys to fit those profiles, that's why Ohio State always has a good defensive line. Big loss on the last play threatens to knock this drive off course. It's second and 16. The short hands, it's Edwards. Tripped up for the tackle. Running backs just have to be a weapon in the passing game, even for little dump offs and check downs. Yeah, find your matchups. I mean, you think about running back versus a linebacker. We like that matchup in space. And so find ways to get the football to your running back in space where you can break tackles and make things happen because they're just so dynamic. Motion from the offense. Back to pass, it's Orgy. Finds his big tight end. Good job running that route to get past the sticks because he got nothing after the catch. You don't want to have to settle for the field goal down here when you have a red zone weapon like this dude. Use him. Yeah, and when you get in this area and you've got that big target and that big fella that you can find and you know he's going to win, those critical third down situations, you're going to find him more and more. Headed to the end zone. And he's loose and he'll take it to the house. The offense goes as he goes, so really no surprise on the opening drive. They keep feeding him the football. He showed you all of his ability on that TD. Lining up to tack one more onto that lead. And the PAT makes it 7-0. A 70-yard touchdown drive, and the scoring play came on the 12-yard run. A 
about to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. He'll bring it out. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. The Buckeyes roll that offense back out there. Boy, they had that last drive moving a little bit, David, but then the mistake just crushed them. Yeah, and those mistakes are going to happen. You're going to throw the football, you're going to throw interceptions. But I think I stay aggressive with this offense. I get back to what I did in the first part of that drive that made me successful. I agree, David. Just turn the page if you're a quarterback, right? From this drive, you did a lot of good things there leading up to that pick. Forget about it. Move on. Play the next one. Touch pass on the run. The defense wouldn't let him loose, and even though it's a completion, they lost yardage. Offense breaks the huddle on third down. We've reached the end of the period, and Michigan has the lead. We've put one in the books. Let's have a look at our game summary. Heading in the opposite directions now as we crank it up in the second. Better find the earplugs. Here comes the noise. Backing this defense on third down. Makes the catch. It's a Buka. And he's not going to make it. The defense denying him the first down. They allowed the completion, but this defense was swarming to keep them away from that first down line. Yeah, and you allow completions in those third down situations underneath the sticks, and you come up and rally, and everybody flies to the football. That's great execution by this defense. Fourth down, and the punt team sends it the other way. He'll settle for some pretty good field position and make the fair catch at around the 35. Michigan ready to get that offense rolling again. And I think they'll give him two on that one, second and eight coming up. These two first squared off in 1897, and this rivalry is almost like a history of the sport itself. Uh, so much history, so much tradition. I, mean, I can go back to 2006 when they were one and two in the country. You know, like, these games really matter. The uniforms are clean. The athletes are flowing. There's tons of athletes all over the place. This is always a huge showdown. And you think about some of the great coaches that have graced the sidelines in this rivalry, Bo Schembechler at Michigan and Woody Hayes at Ohio State. And it's amazing, in a conference full of trophy games, maybe the greatest rivalry doesn't even have one. Third down conversions are a huge stat, and this one would be a doozy if they can pull it off. Looking to throw at Georgi. That pass not close as he got drilled trying to deliver it, and it'll bring up fourth down. Great job by the defense dialing up some pressure on third down. They hit the quarterback and force the incompletion. The Wolverines will send out the punt unit. The punter going to get his first work of the afternoon. Boulder, Colorado. Where, yes, I'm going for it. Fair catch called for and made. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the now field. On fourth down, that last drive out. fizzled out, Jesse. They had to punt it. Yeah, they did. And, David, they're just going to have to do a better job this time around erasing the mental mistakes. And just trying to solve the defensive riddle, understanding what they're trying to do to you and attack them. I like this guy as a running back because he can run between the tackles and he can also go outside. He can really do it all. Got six on first down. Now a lot of options on second and four. Looking for a gap, it's Henderson. And they make the tackle, but he has plenty for the first down. Well, the defense knew coming into this one it was going to be a physical game. Guys are going to have to be great at the point of attack and get off blocks and make tackles. They couldn't stop the offense from picking up that first down on that run play. And they'll line up from the 31 on first down. Give to the back. Not much he could do there. Does pick up two to the 34. And those physical runs take a toll. It might not be a big game now, but down the road, third, fourth quarter, late in the ball games, they tend to turn into bigger runs. 
after picking up a couple at second and eight. He'll keep it himself. Got the first down. Looking for more. And after a nice gain, the runner just scoops out of bounds. Well, this is one of the fastest quarterbacks in college football, and that's why the option's a good idea, because if he can get out in space and he gets a chance to get downfield, he is really difficult to tackle, and he's very difficult to catch, as you saw in that last play, getting a first down. From the gun, they'll try to impose their will. Man, a nice second effort by the back to break a tackle. But how about those defensive backs willing to come up, stick their face in the fan, and make a tackle? Those are the best run defenses, too, right? It's not just D-linemen and linebackers getting all the plays, but it's DBs that are willing to not just cover, but tackle backs in the open field. The inside handoff. And the ball's free in the backfield. Defense coming up with a huge fumble recovery. And he's brought down, and this defense gets the ball back for its own. Oh, and it's a hit like that that will absolutely light up the sideline, light up the stadium, change the momentum, and help you win a football game because that hit is what caused that fumble. Guys, here come those maize and blue winged helmets on offense. They missed an opportunity to extend this lead the last time they had it, Jesse. Yeah, they got to be able to regain that momentum, right? Go back to what was working earlier on in this one. And, David, to me, that starts with being the more physical team. No, I definitely agree. Being the more physical team, but understanding the situation of the game. You're still winning. You got the football back. Now put a nice drive together and execute. Got three on first down. It's second and seven. Looking to throw. It's Orgy. Getting some heat. Finds a tight end. And he'll step across the sidelines after making a good gain on that one. So an example of a tight end doing a little unheralded work to set up a much better third down situation. And I like the QB here, Reese. I like the decision where I understand, let's get this football out, let's get some positive yards, and then get to third down. And we can still have a better situation now because we got rid of the football and took the yards that were there. Now with a great opportunity as they pick up the first down, they've got it at the 40. Well, they needed two yards to get that first down. That's exactly what they got. Great job of execution. No secret about it. Just got to be physical, get a hat on a hat, no man wins, all the cliches to get that third down and short. And the Wolverines come to the line with a fresh set of downs. Off the play fake on first down to throw. Grabbed on the outside, it's Edwards. And that play just looked to be a mess from the snap, and he's run out of bounds behind the line of scrimmage. Let's see what they've got on second down. The give to the tailback. And maybe they want to try somewhere else because there is nothing doing in the middle of this defense. Man, nowhere to run on that play at all. About all you can say is do better. But that's the problem. Are they able to do better? And that's why you keep trying things, right? Keep trying to get on the perimeter, run it up the middle, try different things to see what you do well. On third down, going up top. Going up top. And that'll be incomplete. They certainly weren't afraid to take a shot there. And now it's fourth down. Nice job by the defense. They're mixing up their look. They're third and long in field goal range. They go zone coverage. So everybody on the back end has the eye on the quarterback, and they're able to break on the ball, force the incompletion. So they're going to send out the field goal unit to try a long one. He's going to have to break out the Thunderfoot on this one, a 57-yard attempt. Thought he had it and couldn't get it through the uprights. He missed it. And the margin is still seven after the miss, guys. The Buckeyes roll that offense back out there. When you're playing from behind, you can't afford to give it up the way they did the last drive, David. 
No doubt, you cannot give the football away. Again, turnover is the biggest stats in winning and losing games. You're behind, Palmer. Take care of the ball, but we got to go get a score here. Yeah, and they just got to do a better job executing. I like the game plan so far for them, but they just need to go out and do a better job connecting the dots. That completion leaves us with second and medium. Going to run it. It's Judkins. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. And there was no space, nowhere to go. That play went absolutely nowhere. Sometimes you just need a dude to show up and make a play, and he did. Sometimes you just need to block that dude, and they did. We've reached the two-minute warning, and we have ourselves a ball game, and they have a chance to take the lead here before the half. Decibels rising as the crowd gets behind this defense on third down. Looking to throw at Tower. Oh, they really could have used that catch there. Physical pass defense. It brings up a fourth down. This is a point where you just got to be able to focus. And the critical down and distances in this game, like that third down right there, when it's a good throw, you got to make the catch. You got to be able to make that play. And the Buckeyes will try to pin them back with the punt. This will be the second time they've had to kick it away. Bringing it back, it's Morgan. Cover guys do their job, and they get him stopped at the 22-yard line. And here comes the Michigan offense back on the field. We talk about settling for points, but sometimes when you have to settle for nothing, David, it can be demor... Slips one guy, and now he's loose. And they pick up a better than 30 yards on that completion before the defense brings him down. Well, after that last play, you can see how electrifying this guy is and how special he is after he makes the catch. If I'm on offense, I'm trying to find a lot of ways to get him touches in this game. What a dynamic play on that last one. Flips the field, and they've got it first and 10 from the 28. He's looking to throw it. Catch in the middle. It's Morris. Well, they execute the end route. And how about the arm strength by the QB? That was an absolute bullet on that completion. The Wolverines looking to take advantage of this red zone trip. On second down, he'll let it fly. He's got it on the run. They go up top to get it down to the five-yard line as they try to pay off this drive. Man, he looks like he's in a rhythm on this drive, right? Three for three. He's going where he needs to go with the football. The defense doesn't have any answers for him. Find the offensive coordinator. I'm letting this guy keep chucking it down here close to the goal line. They really got this offense humming. Just a fourth play of the drive, and it's first and goal. Looking to pass. It's Orgy. Makes the grab. And to the end zone. Touchdown, Michigan. A score for the big fella here. Why are tight ends so effective in the red zone? Well, these aren't the guys that are going to burn by you and go for 70 most of the time. But when you can use their big body frames, threaten them to run the football and be a blocker in the running game, and now you slip into the secondary, make that big play. They'll try to add another to their lead. And the extra point makes it 14-0. Quick work on that scoring drive, just four plays. And the score comes on a five-yard touchdown pass. They're just about ready to kick it away. Looking for those open spaces and opportunity. Didn't find any crease in that kickoff coverage, and he'll be stopped at the 17. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. So late in the half, this is really an opportunity, David, maybe to swing the momentum in their favor. 
Dang right. There's no time to be conserved. If we're a little bit down, listen, I just think this is a point in the offense that they can prove. Like, we're here, we're going to create something now that we can build on in the second half. Coach said all week he wanted to be aggressive. This is a great opportunity to show that right now. At the end of the first half, try and generate some momentum, score some points before going into halftime. In second and ten, he'll throw again. If the quarterback's a little more on target there, maybe they hook up, but it's an incompletion. Well, there was something the quarterback liked in the pre-snap there, thinking his primary target was going to have a favorable matchup, but the defense did a nice job disguising that look. They got more bodies over to him and forced the incompletion. You make up the game plan and not a lot on the play sheet for this. Third and long from inside their own 20. And how about that alertness and that swarming D to keep him from getting the first down? The defense uses their second timeout of the half as they try to get their act together. The Buckeyes will bring the punt team onto the field. This is a spot you see many returners try to take a chance, but not this time. The fair catch just inside the 40. He'll start this drive firing. Just a short pass to the tight end. Defense caught out of position, and they get him down finally at the 38. Really good job working through his progression. You get it to him quickly, and the big tight end has a chance to run a little. And a really good job by the QB throwing an accurate throw. I, I got to hit those guys on the move, on the run, so they can do this. They can catch the football, get upfield, and chew up some extra yards. On first and ten from the 38. On the run, it's Orgy. He makes the connection. He's brought down solid pickup, but a little bit short of the first down. They'll use a timeout right before halftime. Maybe time for one or two more plays. And here on second down, they'll send out the field goal unit to try to get three before the break. He's going to have to get into this one a little bit from 47 yards away. Splits the upright, it's good. And they'll push that lead out a little further. That late in the half field goal always gives you a little boost going to the locker room, and they'll need to finish off these final few seconds and not allow them to answer. Looking for an alley from inside his own 10. And the returner will be knocked down. First half in the books. Time now to join Kevin Connors in our halftime update. Fellas, whether it's in the shoe or the big house, when you have these two programs with all that's at stake today, you know emotions run high in a game known simply as the game. And we'd be remiss if we didn't start this halftime report by acknowledging the sparkling play of this tight end. The guy's like an aircraft carrier out there as a blocker. And then when he releases and shows off that speed and route running, he's almost unguardable. Gotta believe he won't be able to go anywhere in this second half without someone attached to his hip. With that, let's throw it back to the guys to see how the fight between Michigan and Ohio State plays out. And the Wolverines will line up to kick off and start the second half. He'll start the return inside his five. He was looking for some running room, but not much to be found as he stopped at the 18. Michigan ready to get that offense rolling again. Trying to set the tone on the ground in the second half. Picks his way ahead, pick up a three, and gets it to the 20-yard line. And sticking to the run. I tell you what, a lot of teams that are really good are really stubborn, and they continue to run the football even with little success. So this offense is going to continue to focus on running the football, you can tell. After the three-yard pickup, they come to the line second and seven. They'll run play action. Snagged in the middle. It's Klein. That is exactly what you're looking for when you talk explosive plays. The defense finally able to make the stop. Well, that's a really nice job surveying the field and delivering an accurate throw. You know, when I think back to Michigan quarterbacks, I think of guys like Elvis Gerbach or Tom Brady, Jim Harbaugh. 
Brian Greasy, guys that could hurt you throwing the ball from the pocket, surveying the field, reading defenses, and making quick decisions. This guy has the ability to do all of those things. And a nice run there before the defense finally makes the stop. And a nice job by the running back, finding space, getting downhill, making the good run. Great job finishing with his pads. Eight-yard pickup on first down leaves him with second and short. They'll give it to the back. And he's knocked down, but not before moving the chains. And that's all you want, right? You want that first down. Uh, understand the situation. Understand I got to get north and south, get a first down, get a new set of downs. The Wolverines are on the move. Running back searching for a hole. Really nice stop there from this senior leader. Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. Oh, and they'll try to catch him with a pass. Fires to the tight end. Brought down at the 28, a chunk play, 15 yards on that one, and a first down. That throw and catch, a really good example of why coaches don't want a quarterback to get stuck on a particular target, isn't it, Dave? Yep, that's exactly right. Find the guy who's open, because you got so many guys that have so much speed that can do so much damage on the field. Find my matchup, get it to him, let him do the rest. The sure hands, it's Morgan. They make the stop right there. Good pickup, but still short of the first down. Knowing that your man can make the catch against his defender, that wasn't a big play, but it can set you up down the line to be able to take advantage. Yes, get it to him as fast as I can. When I see him open, he runs the little hitch, get it to him so he can make a little bit of yards after the catch, and eventually that little gain, he's going to bust one of those with his athletic ability. He'll get it all the way down to the eight-yard line, and the defense is feeling the heat. Well, I know the tight end did some good things after the catch, but got to give the quarterback credit, too, for the location of the throw. Because he put it out in front of his big man, he was able to make the catch and accelerate, creating some distance there between him and the defense. And the Wolverines have it with a first and goal. They'll try to get it in with the run. Touchdown, Wolverines! And the route is on. They've extended this lead, guys, but sometimes in a rivalry game, you get down and you fight back that much harder. Man, you've seen crazy comebacks and crazy swings of momentum in rivalry games. You just need that first thing to break your way home. And I think it really comes down to their key playmakers, David. They can come back, but these guys need to take ownership. Now's the time. In this type of game, they have got to step up and start making plays. The AT unit on the field. The kick is up and good and put one more on the lead. An 84-yard drive there, and it was capped off with the eight-yard run. Lining up to cover the kick after that touchdown drive. And he's coming out of the end zone. Not nearly as much as he had hoped when he brought it out of the end zone. He'll be stopped at the 15. The Buckeyes roll that offense back out there. They face a pretty tall mountain here, Jesse, down 24. But if they're going to climb it, this is a good time to start. Sense of urgency's got to be big right here. You just get the feeling at this point of the game, David. They've got to score on this drive. Obviously, their defense needs to get stopped. But at this point, offensively, they've got to execute much more. They, they got to be super aggressive. Down 24, you're going to need three touchdowns, three two-point conversions, everything to kind of go your way. So fast and throw in the football. From the gun, they'll try the middle. Pushes ahead for two. They'll mark it at the 17. Third down, and this offense is already in a world of trouble. They could really use a conversion, not to mention multiple scores. To throw, it's Howard. 
They're setting up the screen. On the move at the 30. Just trucks through it. He's run out of bounds, but a big play on that one, and it'll be a first down. No matter how many times they tell you to look for it, it is tough to defend a perfectly executed screen. Yeah, because I'm trying to go get the quarterback, and it looks everything looks like pass, but when you see it, when you see that screen, you got to retrace your steps, get back in the play. Nice job by the offense, but the defense just has to recognize that a little bit sooner. The Buckeyes with the first and ten. He'll pull it on the read. Nowhere to run on that one. He loses four on the carry. And how about the aggressiveness of this defense? I love this. Don't let him get to the sideline. Kept the ball in the middle of the field. Went after the quarterback right away like some missiles and got him on the ground. Couldn't get him blocked on that last one. Now it's second and 14. On the option, it's Howard. And he probably should have just handed that one off. He is snowed under in the backfield. I think a, a lot of quarterbacks like those defenses that will be passive and let you let it slowly develop. Nah, this defense, you can tell, they were aggressive and attacking, and it really paid off. This is a third and long. Now the play fake. He's going to fire deep. And it slips through his fingers incomplete. That would have been a huge gain if he could have held on. Well, at this juncture in the game, with how the scoreboard looks, no question this offense is going to have to throw to get back in the game. And it's going to be tricky now because the defense is expecting it. You're going to throw into a lot of big zone coverages with everybody's eyes on the quarterback. Not going to be easy. Excellent coverage that time. Didn't give him any room to set up a big return. Guys, here come those maize and blue winged helmets on offense. Fires to the big fella. They make the stop after the catch and still some work to do to pick up that first down. Well, it's a nice job, too, of the quarterback after the play fake there, getting his eyes down the field. He had to get that to his tight end quickly, knowing he wasn't going to have a lot of space to run with after the catch. After the first down completion, it's second and short. Looking for a man. It's Orgy. Floating away. Quarterback tried to scramble around for a while, but the defense able to bring him down. Not sure exactly what led to that, whether the protection wasn't right or the quarterback just didn't see it, but the result was a negative play in a sack. Well, one thing I do know is that quarterback had no chance to get that ball downfield. That pocket was breaking down, and it was breaking down quickly. There were just too many bodies in that backfield for the QB to make anything happen. Oh, it is on the offensive line to shore up the protection after the sack on the last play. Third down. From the gun, wants to pass. Grabbed in the middle. It's Loveland. There to make the tackle, but the big throw is good enough to give them a first down. This is exactly why third down is practiced every single day. Third and short, third and medium, third and long. It's money down for a reason. you got to lock in. Great success by the offense so far on third down. This offense lining up now at the 48-yard line on first and 10. That's what you expect from a senior. Don't give them any extra yards. Great tackle there. They're strong and they're scrawl. Defensive tackles, they're scrawl. There's such big jokers in the middle where they just lock out those offensive linemen. And running backs, listen, they don't have much of a chance when you got that 300 plus pound guy grabbing you around the shoulder pad. You tend to go to the ground pretty quickly. And they'll wrestle him to the ground after a short game. If they can convert here, that type of play can really give you a shot of momentum. Trying to move the sticks on third down through the air. Catch in the middle. It's Morgan. Knocked down immediately, but they couldn't stop him from getting the big gainer to the 30.
We've reached the end of the period, and Michigan has the lead. And they've built a comfortable lead after three quarters of play. Let's take a look at how we've gotten here. Just about ready to go in the fourth, and we'll see if any drama can be mustered. The Wolverines look to keep this drive humming. And he intercepts it. Looking for more room. He's at the 30. He's at the 10. Touchdown, Buckeyes. What a great play by the defense and paying it off with the interception return. And this defense has had a rough day, but how about this play? Breaking on the football, making the pick, taking it to the house, maybe build some momentum for some future games. And now they'll try to get the two-point conversion, guys. Quarterback flips it ahead quickly to the receiver. He gets in there for the two. It's a two-possession game now, and they've still got a shot. They'll kick it off and send that defense right back out there to try to score again after the pick six. On the move from inside is five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. And here comes the Michigan offense back on the field. Scanning the field, it's Orgy. Quickly out to the tight end. And good coverage by the defense, just a short game. That's a great example of the defense there tackling the catch. As soon as the big fella caught the ball, down he went, not picking up the first. A little bit more to go after that last completion. They'll try to pick it up on second down. Wide receiver now comes in motion. Looking to pass on second down. Trying to get to it. Makes a connection. That one could really put this drive into high gear as they have a first down at the 37. Well, I love play callers that want to stay aggressive regardless of what the score is, regardless of how much time is left on the clock. And I promise you this, there are a lot of fans, there are a lot of teams all across college football that are paying attention to what is happening right now. They've got it at the 37. It's first and 10. Takes the handoff. It's Edwards. He's dropped behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of three. It's going to be tough sledding for the offense here. They're trying to ice this game by running the football and bleeding the clock. They've got a pretty good lead here late in the game, but the defense knows the run's coming, right? So they're going to be loading the line of scrimmage, getting stops like what they just did. Be interesting to see what the offense does on this next one. Dialing up a second down pass play. The throw. And it'll be incomplete. This is some physical pass defense. We know this guy's a weapon, not just taking handoffs, but he can catch the ball, too. That play, not so much. Got to do a better job reeling it in. They line up with some serious work to do if they want to convert this one. On third and long, doesn't need to take the check down. Scrambling away. Still on his feet at the 45. And a really nice run and pick up there before the defense avoided disaster and stopped the really big play. It's going to be tough on this defense containing this guy because he's got that sixth sense to get outside the pocket, and at that point, he's thrown it and hurting you, or you can take off and run. That time, able to get the first down. Big challenge for the defense moving forward. They'll try the run. They'll rip off eight on that play. It's second and two. I think you have to like what you see if you're the coaching staff here. Your offense is on the field, and it looks like you got a pretty good drive going, and you're just going to try and keep this thing marching, keep the clock ticking. You've got a really nice lead here late. Just want to find ways to keep the chains moving. They're doing that. They'll ride the running back and leave it with it. Really nice stop there from this senior leader.
Trying to wear down this defense. A seventh play of the drive. It's third and one. They'll stick to the ground looking for the marker. They bring him down, and he's going to lose a yard on that one. I'm going to take a wild guess and say that's probably not where the hole was supposed to be. No, that's, that's not where it's supposed to go. You want to run the ISO in the middle of the field, downhill. Um, all, all the guys are set up to run that play downhill, too. So when you bounce it out wide, a lot of times those angles aren't set up on the outside, and the play was dead from the beginning with that inside penetration. Complete and looking for enough for the first down. He's run out of bounds, but he's got enough to move the sticks. They showed great trust in their quarterback right there, and why not? He's had an outstanding game. The outstanding game has taken care of the football. Now late in the game, you've got the lead. That first down now tells me now it's time to start running the football, run the clock, get out of here with the dub. They'll go to the ground. Miles ahead for a pickup of one to the 32. At this point of the game, the offense has the lead, and the offensive coordinator knows they want to keep running the football. So he's going back, he's looking at his playlist, and he's saying, which runs work the best for me in this game? What can I lean on right here to make sure we win this one? Didn't get much on first down. It's second and nine. To the air. It's Orgy. They'll throw it to the back on the screen. He will step out of bounds, but not before the big pickup and a first down for this offense. He's been so locked in, it seems like any pass called is a guaranteed chunk play. Yeah, and in winning late like this in the ball game, keep trusting him, keep spinning. You know why? Because stats matter late in the game. You want some postseason awards? Keep chucking it, keep getting those stats. He'll do it himself. Got some room headed to the goal line. Touchdown, Michigan! And the stomping has commenced. They built a comfortable lead, and Michigan is firmly in control. Hail to the victors has been playing. This team is able to moment handle the game as well as any Michigan team we've seen. They know every year this will be a fight, but Michigan has brought it, and Ohio State hasn't responded. And I think Michigan has just done a better job executing here in the second half. I love the way they've mixed in the run with the pass offensively. Defensively, they're doing a great job communicating. They're just the more locked-in team here late in the game. And the extra point splits the uprights. They put it in the end zone with a 12-play scoring drive. And the score came on an impressive run from the 20. About to kick it off after punching it in for the touchdown. And he takes this from inside the five. Really disciplined job by the coverage unit to get down there and make the stop at the 19. Here comes the Ohio State offense onto the field. They're going to open this drive with a pass. Grabbed over the middle. It's Smith. Nice pitch and catch there, and they'll have enough for the first down. Here's the deal. You're down three possessions. You know, it doesn't feel likely they're going to come back and win, but we've seen crazier stuff happen in college football. It all starts with a big completion on a two-minute drive. They'll get the momentum started in your direction. And the Buckeyes racing to the line in the hurry-up. To the air on first down. That's reeled in. It's Tate. They stop him almost immediately. Short game there and still a little ground to cover to pick up the first. Well, and here's the problem offensively. Because you're trailing by so much so late in the game, the defense now is going to be playing big zone coverages, and they're going to allow you to throw the ball underneath in the middle of the field, rally to make a tackle and bleed the clock. It's going to be hard now for this offense to claw their way back in this one. And that pass will be jarred loose on second down. That brings up third down. Well, a lot of things haven't gone right for him. You saw an incompletion right there. It's been offense. It's been defense. They just haven't been able to click and get into a rhythm here. And now they're playing catch up. And you know they're going to be throwing at each and every play here in the first quarter. As they come to the line on third and short from the 43, I wonder if they already know they'll go for it if they don't make it here. Good pick up there as he gets the first down, and they'll mark him at the 48. We asked earlier this week, who's your favorite receiver? And, of course, he said the open one. But we know who he really wants to go to on third down. 
the best one. <laughs> I mean, I think the open one, obviously, the politically correct answer. But you want to find the guy that you got that great chemistry with. You know exactly where he's going to be. You got that bond and that trust. Excellent coverage and good use of the hands to knock it away. You see an incompletion there. I think a big reason why this team is in such a hole right now in the fourth quarter is they have just not been able to find the explosive plays throwing the ball. And you got to wonder at this point, is it too little too late? And the incompletion brings up a second down for this offense. Back to throw, it's Howard. Unloads to the wideout. He's got an open man. He threw that one with some serious heat. This senior quarterback doesn't need a lot of space to get it in there. The Buckeyes will line it up on first and ten. He wants to throw it again. Quick strike complete. Finally run out of bounds, but he has this offense rolling with a first down. Big play in the passing game there, and I like the receiver gearing down in the zone. Did a nice job finding the soft spot on defense between the defenders, giving the quarterback an easy target to throw to to complete that throw. Snap's going to come from the 23 on first and 10. Got it in the middle. It's Abuka. Didn't pick up a lot there. Moved it forward just a few. And this offense is going to have to find more explosive plays. And it's, it's, it can't just rely on the dink and dunk. It's going to have to find itself and score more points. And listen, they got beat up today. But moving on to the future, they've got some good pieces. they got to find a way to fit them together, create some explosive plays on this offense, because today they've been lacking. Got it in the middle, it's Scott. And he might be known for run fits, but that was a sure and heavy tackle on the tight end. So surprised we have not been calling this guy's name more. He's one of the best tight ends in the country, but give the defense credit. They have had an outstanding game plan limiting him so far. That's only his second catch of the game. In the gun, looking to throw on third down. Caught over the middle, it's Smith. They get him stopped at the five-yard line, but it will be first and goal from there. The offense gets a quick timeout at this point. Every second is precious. He wants to throw it. Pocket starts to collapse. Quick timeout call by the offense after the play, trying to preserve every minute possible. Defense rolls up deep in its own end on that last play. Now a second and long coming. Back to throw, it's Howard. It falls incomplete. He was trying to find his man for six. And this defense has put a game together. Like, it is hard to put all the facets of defense together. Run defense, pass defense. They've been so good, man. Dialed in. You could tell they were ready. They were fast. They were physical. They dominated this football game. Looking to throw on third and goal. Makes the catch. And I know this football game is over, but we got to keep fighting. We got to keep finding something, some kind of rhythm in this offense, something we can hang our hat on that we do really, really well. Listen, the intermediate passing game like this has taken over college football, short to intermediate. So if they can find some of this, it'll help their offense moving forward. Wide receiver coming across in motion. Barges ahead. And he'll find the end zone. Touchdown, Ohio State. And a nice touchdown, continuing to fight, continuing to play. This one, it, it's pretty much over. Down multiple possessions this late in the football game. It, it would take a miracle, but nice job by this offense, continuing to fight, push the ball down the field, make plays. How about this? These guys are going for two. Trying to bully their way in. Worked on the touchdown. Might as well do the same thing on the two-point conversion. He gets all eight points on that trip. They're definitely up against it. Time running out. Down two possessions. They'll try the onside kick. Few anxious moments there, but the hands team true to its name as they make the grab and get the ball. So with the late lead, they're ready to just drain the clock in victory formation. And they're just about out of chances. The defense can stop it one more time as the quarterback takes a knee. 